world is a giant continent and extremely hot. Meet Trinaxodon. Trinaxodon's ancestors were cold-blooded reptiles, meaning body temperature equals environment temperature. But if it's too hot, reptiles start dying. If it's too cold, reptiles start dying. If it's a climate change, reptiles start dying. Trinaxodon was sick of this. I'm sick of this, he said. So he grew fur and learned to regulate body temperature, becoming the first warm-blooded animal ever. He was half mammal, half reptile. But my boy Trinaxodon didn't have it easy. Outside were big bad dinosaurs. Now put yourself in his shoes. He had to eat insects, small herbivores and invertebrates. But he didn't give up. Instead he evolved his teeth to get even more nutrients from food. Wow look at this dude he's so cool said other reptilians and avians. When I grow up I want my kids to be like him they continued. Then three of them got together and died in a Permian Triassic extinction event. But some half mammals, half reptiles, half mammals, half avians managed to survive. Wait, don't lie eggs, raise your offspring inside your body, why? Easy protect, easy feed. Okay, there's the first full mammal, but they still lived underground and ate insects because outside big scary dinosaurs. What's that? It's the next evolution, Euromaya sinensis. Meet Aeomaya scansoria, the last grandmother you share with kangaroos. Her children later split into marsupials and placentals. We have some more evolutions, nothing interesting is happening. Watch out, watch out, watch out! Goodbye dinosaurs, high mammals. Then it probably maybe went Repanonamus robustus, Aldiatlasius colchi, Prosimians. Look, some of those Prosimians learned to move like Tarzan and they called themselves old world monkeys. Nice, we finally have monkeys. Now they can just evolve into humans. Then Earth turned into a snowball and everything died. But not our monkeys. Oh look, there are more monkeys. And these have new specs like color vision and opposite thumbs. Oh, that's an ape. Wait, isn't ape same as monkey? No, apes are evolved monkeys without tails and much bigger and smarter. Nice, they made apes great again. Nacalipithecus nakayamai, Oranopithecus macedoniensis, Oreopithecus bamboli, Sahelathrompus chadensis, Ororintugenensis. Year, minus 6 million. Two little sisters are born. One is chimpanzee grandma and the other is your grandma. Your grandma then evolved into Artipithecus ramidus. Yo, check this out. If you walk on two legs, you can carry more food. Now, ramidus was a cool dude. He wasn't that strong or fast. Didn't have big claws or teeth, but he could climb trees. Oh man, nature didn't give us anything. But I'm so glad Africa is full of trees. Poof. Climate change made it real hard real quick. So hard that males decided not to fight over females, but each male makes sure one female survives. Soon Artipithecus ramidus evolved into Australopithecus afarensis. Ever heard of Lucy? She was a afarensis. No trees, only grass and lions. Big scary lions. Afarensis live much like hyenas, scavenging for meat and insects. Check this out, there is food inside the bone. Nice, now we have at least somewhat sustainable source of food. What's that? It's the first human! And they still fight hyenas over leftovers. Are you tired of smashing bones into a million pieces? I present you sharp stone. Sharp stone is the newest technology that lets you open bones precisely. Cut meat and even hunt. Get your sharp stone today. And now there's more humans. And with new updates, long legs, no hair and sweat. With longer legs than arms, you can throw stuff without falling over. And while other animals need to stop to cool down, sweat cools you down while running. By this time they also figured out how to put a stone onto a stick. All this turned humans from scavengers into hunters. Now there is only one rule when hunting in savanna. Don't hunt in savanna. Many of them move to Asian jungles and European taigas. And they have a reliable source of food, so their huge brains started being even huger. What did you say? That's right, a word. Now they can speak, and also they can make fire, but use it rarely. More humans moved to Europe and Asia, then Homo erectus in Africa evolved into Homo heidelbergensis. Some of the Homo heidelbergensis reached Europe, and they evolved into Neanderthals. Neanderthals were fastest, strongest, smartest, and most resilient humans ever. Homo heidelbergensis that stayed in Africa evolved into Homo sapiens. Sapiens were very smart, but not smarter than Neanderthals. They started using fire daily and building huts. They would set a forest on fire, and eat cooked food and now they can eat even more stuff like wheat, rice and potatoes. But everyone thinks that sapiens are just a weaker version of Neanderthals. Sapiens are just a weaker version of Neanderthals, everyone said. To prove everybody wrong, sapiens went into the Middle East, just like Neanderthals. But it was too cold and the food was too big, so they returned to Africa. Boom! It's an ice age! Let's see. Asian jungles? Still jungles. European snowy forests? Still snowy. African grasslands? Turned to deserts and sapiens are almost extinct. But just then, a miracle happened. Wow, there's like a huge water. Water can be huge. That's a huge water. 
Is this poisonous or edible? Who's gonna try first? Well, not me. Okay, then we wait. And so they waited until someone starved and tried it. So how do you feel? <coughs> I'm dying. <coughs> Just kidding, it's edible. <coughs> Don't. Just kidding, same trick two times. <laughs> Temperatures in Europe dropped to minus 30 Celsius. To escape desert, sapiens came to the Ice Age Europe, and this time they drove Neanderthals not only from the Middle East, but from the face of the Earth. The story begins with Neanderthals. Neanderthals could take multiple hits from large herbivores and keep fighting, while sapiens would die of a single smack. This forced sapiens to use brain, so they invented a tlatl, which allowed them to throw spears two times further. Wow, technology is so cool, said sapiens. So they kept making sharper, better blades and spikes, while Neanderthals didn't. Now, if you're a mammal trying to survive, the best strategy is to form large groups. But in large groups, there are cheats and freeloaders. So in a group, everybody needs to personally know and trust everybody else, to make sure everyone does their part. But the limit to personally knowing everyone is 150 people. More than that, and members don't know and trust each other. So they start splitting and competing for food and territory. Sapiens then evolved probably the best ability yet, imagination. No other species could imagine something that doesn't physically exist. This allows sapiens to have tribe spirits that will punish cheats and freeloaders and other imaginary stuff like rules and justice. So if the spirits don't get you, someone will. There were no freeloaders because everybody feared great spirits and huge spikes. Groups grew to hundreds and even thousands. They also started trading, but for trading you need trust. And for trust you need weeks or months before you really learn each other's motives and beliefs. That or just pray to spirits to punish if anybody scams anybody. When hunting, unlike Neanderthals who would hunt in small groups, sapiens would form groups of hundreds and chase entire herds into narrow points, where it would be easy to slaughter them. After a single afternoon of collective effort, you would literally have metric tons of meat and skin. They can also freeze meat for later. Neanderthals sometimes got sick of sapiens taking all their food, but a group of 15 Neanderthals who personally love and trust each other are no match for a group of 500 sapiens who personally love and trust magical rock. And the weather started going crazy. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Neanderthals couldn't find enough food to sustain their large bodies. They too went poof. And also every other non-sapien species went poof. My job here is done, goodbye and watch this next.